the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. We'd like to welcome you to our current event and weekly Bible study for January 8th, 2012. And today we're going to be kind of taking a look at 2012 and some impending things that may be on the horizon. Uh, now, they, we're just going to be really covering a couple subjects today. We'll probably continue with this theme possibly in the next teaching. Uh, of course, I don't really know how I'm going to get through this 37-page PDF today. Uh, it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. So <clears throat> I'm going to do my best to see how far we can get. A lot of information that we're going to be covering is applicable to things that we're moving into, uh, particularly 2012. I think a lot of things are going to be ramping up. Uh, we're going to be talking about the recent legislation that... They've just railroaded through with the uh, National Defense Authorization Act and the implications for American citizens regarding that. <clears throat> and uh, we're also going to be talking extensively the second part of the study on the... Um, we're gonna, there's some other topics intermingled in there as well. And then also we're going to be segueing into the potential for a global pandemic regarding... Uh, mutated, created strains of either avian H5N1 or swine flu H1N1, these mutant variants that the government is creating, and then how also vaccinations play into that scenario. We're going to be covering some new ground today we've never covered before, and uh, very important information regarding the coming year. So before we get into this information, which is pretty pretty heavy duty. Uh, I'll just go through some Bible verses and uh, kind of set the stage with the Bible verses. Keep our eyes fixed on the Lord Jesus Christ and not on all these scenarios, but to not be, at the same time, not to be ignorant of Satan's devices, lest he get an advantage of us. And um, the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, uh, starting there, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. So, very important verses regarding the uh, our lives in general, but the, regarding the days and times we're moving into. Trusting in the Lord with all your heart, leaning not unto your own understanding. It's very tr easy. The world will tell you to trust your own heart, but the Bible says that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And that he who trusteth in his own heart is a fool. So, um, we want to be careful about trusting our own heart. We want to trust in the Lord. And then it goes on, and it says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. So, if you don't acknowledge him, and I don't mean acknowledging him for let's say, bad things you've done, but acknowledging him for all the things he's done for you, for the goodness in your life, for not taking credit for things. The Bible says um, that the Lord will share his glory with no one, essentially. So always giving God the credit, acknowledging him. If you do that, it says he shall direct your paths. So that's really important. I think that's a lot of people's problems, is that they tend to not give God the credit for things. Uh, or they tend to take it on themselves, which is obviously pride, which God detests. Um, pride is, is the opposite of humility. And, um, you know, it's not something that you want to be proud before God. So, um, if you're not acknowledging him in all your ways, then I believe the less you acknowledge him, the less he's going to direct your paths, essentially, is what we're talking about here. So just give God the glory and the credit. And he'll direct your path. And then it goes on to say, Be not wise in thine own eyes, which again is, is a humility thing. Uh, fear the Lord, which fear the Lord, a byproduct of fear the Lord is literally humility, which is the opposite of pride. Uh, and then, and depart from evil. Uh, it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones, uh, which implies a physical blessing regarding doing these things. Honor the Lord with, with thy substance, 
with the first fruits of all thine increase, which is a good tenant for giving. And I don't mean the Old Testament Levitical tithe system that a lot of people say we're under that system. The Old Testament Levitical tithe system was a very specific thing for uh, the Jewish people. Um, the Bible says, and I've done a whole teaching on New Testament giving, that as a man hath purposed in his heart, so let him give, for the Lord loveth the cheerful giver. So that's how our giving needs to be based in. And there's all kinds of examples in the New Testament regarding that. So uh, for some people that will be less maybe than a 10% tithe some people it will be more I, you know it's as a man of purpose in his heart so let him give as, as the Lord directs and guides in that regard but I've done a whole teaching on that you can key in just key in tithe or uh, New Testament giving or any of those keywords at the search box at contendingfortruth.com um, now so honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase uh, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. And again, that's reiterated in the New Testament. For whom the Lord loveth, he also chasteneth. And if you be without chastisement or correction or punishment for when you do wrong, if, you, if you're without that, then you're bastards, meaning you're an illegitimate son. So somebody that's calling themselves a Christian and living like the devil, and there's no real chastening on their lives, and maybe you see no conviction of sin, no conscience about it, well, <laughs> very, very high percentage, that person's not saved at all. They're just kidding themselves. And there's no chastening of God on them, which is an actual example of um, uh, evidence of, of salvation. In one regard, I mean, it's not the only, but it's one. <clears throat> Going further, happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. So it's very important in God's eyes for us to have wisdom and understanding. And if you consider 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 where it says, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion. And that's the times we're living in, the end times, regarding the time when the falling away of the churches, the time when the Antichrist is arising or getting ready to arise. God is going to send them strong delusion that they will believe a lie that they might all be damned who received not the love of the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So, they received not the love of the truth. Well, truth is inter intermingled with understanding and with wisdom and with knowledge, true knowledge. It, they, these are very close. So it's very important the day and times we're living in uh, to not be deceived, to be operating in the truth. The vast majority, I would say, of people that would call themselves Christians really don't have a clue about a lot of the things that are getting ready to go down on planet Earth. They're, they've been uh, fed a lot of lukewarm, syrupy sweet stuff from their ministers. Not everyone, but the majority. Or just a lot of plain deceit or lies or pet doctrines or, or whatever. And they're, they're totally unprepared for what's coming. God sending the strong delusion that they will believe a lie, that they might all be damned, that means go to hell, who received not the love of the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So, uh, this is why, again, it is important. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. Uh, it's just very important not to be deceived. Jesus Christ warned over and over again regarding the end times, to be not deceived. And uh, it was one of the main warnings he gave, if not the main. So, then, for the merchandise of it, meaning of wisdom, of those that getteth wisdom and getteth understanding, for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. So, in God's eyes, it's more, much more important to find wisdom and get understanding than it is to find silver or gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Well, that's pretty important. I mean, in the book of Proverbs and Psalms in particular, I mean, this is this same concept is reiterated over and over and over again. Um, going further, length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. So, those are, those are pretty neat things. <laughs> uh, 
length of days, long life, and left hand riches and honor. Uh, her ways are the ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Retain wisdom, retaining truth, retaining understanding. Not just to learn about it and then forget about it and go on your way as though, you know. So go in. Now, obviously, the, the, the primary wisdom that we're in reference to here is biblical wisdom. I mean, obviously, that's the, the primary thing. There's also a lot of end times things, obviously, which we, we get into in this ministry that would fall under this category. Secondarily, I would, I would have to say, primarily, you always want to keep your eyes fixed on the Word of God the Lord, and the Lord Jesus Christ, so, uh, which are one and the same. So, going further, <clears throat> um, let's see where we left off here. My son, let not wisdom, let, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So they shall be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shall thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. Now, a lot of this has application into what we're going into regarding the end times. Uh, and obviously a lot of people right now that are being persecuted worldwide. I mean, we're not seeing that yet in any real way in America. Not really. I mean, not compared to a lot of other places on the planet. Uh, but the the Bible warns that, you know, about a lot of things in the end times. And these are good verses to, uh, to dwell on regarding that. Um... When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. So, again, this is not about fearing the situation or fearing man. It's about fearing God. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And the Bible says, The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him, and delivereth them. There's another implication of protection. Under the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. Another verse that kind of like that. Psalm 91 gets into a lot of that as well. Um, I kind of, you know, particularly with the study we're getting in today, I wanted to give some encouraging verses, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to just dwell on the situation. We need to look at the situation through biblical lenses. Because if you just to look at these situations apart from the Word of God, then you're going to get, you're going to have this fear of man and the fear of these situations coming upon you. And again, you want to always be grounded in the Word of God. That's the most important thing. So <clears throat> let's see here. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. And then we go to Jeremiah twenty-three, uh, Jeremiah nine twenty-three and twenty-four. I just read these this morning. And it says, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, saith the Lord. So again, we're not we want to glory in our own flesh in any way, shape, or form. Whether it's in your own wisdom, whether it's in your own might, whether it's in your riches or whatever. And, and none of that is, that's all uh, a no-no in God's eyes. You don't want to do that. Okay, but if you're going to glory in something, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, meaning God. That I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. In these things I delight, saith the Lord. So, again, just some good Bible verses to look at there. We're going to go ahead and get into the study. And um, here we have a picture of Obama. Somebody had done in a, uh, uh, basically like a King Arthur type picture, which is basically where he's elevated himself to where basically it's gotten so bad with him. Now remember, God's letting all this happen. Again, we want to always keep our eyes on that. God is, 
letting these things happen. I mean, when you have 50 plus million babies, I think it's like 60 million at this point, since Roe versus Wade aborted, judgment has to come on that country at some point. Unless there would be mass repentance on the level of like Nineveh. You know, and I'm not saying that you still wouldn't reap what you sow, but there's, I don't see that happening, obviously. And um, a lot of different reasons God's judgment eventually has to fall on this country and also the world in general. Because if you look at abortion, just abortion statistics worldwide, I've done studies on abortion. Um, the abortions that are actually going on in America, from a number standpoint, just the actual numbers, is really um, a very small percentage compared to what has actually happened worldwide. If you look at the total numbers, it's... It's way into the billions um, since they started keeping statistics. Uh, I think I got into those statistics in the specific teaching I did on um, abortion. You just key in abortion in the keyword search box at continuefortruth.com. So when you have that much innocent blood literally crying out from the land, and that's how the Bible describes it, the blood of the innocent cries out from the land, eventually at some point God has to judge that. God, I mean, and I think that's the most egregious sin you could possibly commit. And there's a lot of other things going on as well. So we have Obama here in his uh, uh, King Arthur mode and basically he's, he's going into pretty much full dictator mode uh, with as flagrant as he is getting. Uh, and a couple, this is uh, the original articles from Cutting Edge, a couple of their videos they have here barbed wire over on America and then Camp FEMA if you want to know more about those things. I've done several studies on those issues as well. The newly passed National Defense Authorization Act, or NDAA, places private companies on notice that they must act within 72 hours of any order to provide the materials necessary to activate FEMA camps. So now, with this new legislation being passed, these camps are, would now need to be activated within a 72-hour period. Meaning the people that would staff the camps, obviously, they're not just going to fully arm a camp and just keep it fully armed and ready to go all the time with no jobs for the people in them. But they want, within a 72-hour period, to be able to get these camps up and running. Uh, this goes on to say, Cutting Edge has always warned our readers that the federal government intends to turn America into an absolute dictatorship within 72 hours. So they've been warning about this for a long time. Citizens will not have time, uh, well, they're saying to use their survival stuff. Well, okay, in general, but I'm not saying, but I would also say God can always provide a way for, for a person to escape. Um, the Bible says, Jesus Christ said, pray that you be, you be accounted worthy to escape all the things that are coming upon the earth and to stand before the Son of Man regarding the end times. So, uh, we want to have the faith to believe that the Lord can protect us, obviously. So, going further, this is a article from um, that they're citing. Freedom-loving Americans headed to FEMA camps by Dave Hodges, News with Views, December 27th of last year. Uh, it's quoted by saying, quote, Unquestionably, Americans who dare to speak out against the emerging military, military dictatorship within our country will soon be taken up, taking up a new residence at your neighborhood FEMA camp. Uh, and again, this is all a part, this would be like, well, okay, if God's not going to intervene in anyone's lives, yeah, I guess... That's true, but th that's not true. I don't believe that. Uh, through the National Defense Authorization Act, or NDAA, Congress, complete with their 9% public approval rating, has declared war upon the American people. Uh, now, they go on to say, cutting edge, says the last sentence is simply not accurate. The Bush administration, with the complete compliance of the Democratic Party in Congress, declared war on the American people when they passed into law the infamous Patriot Act that turned Americans that turned America into an absolute dictatorship on paper. The only reason many patriots have not yet been arrested is that the government has not been enacting any of the provisions as of yet, or at least not all of them. The, the Patriot Act provides the government the authority to arrest anyone for any reason, without charges, without legal protection of either a lawyer or a trial by peers. Further, this law allows authorities to imprison anyone in a secret location, provides for a secret trial, and for secret executions. And not only that, but authorities may arrest any neighbor or friend who protests their treatment of the arrested. 
and treat that neighbor or friend in exactly the manner described above. So, in other words, this stuff's already pretty much been enacted through the Patriot Act. They just haven't pulled the trigger on any of this stuff yet. Now, let us return to the featured article uh, that we were citing above. The guy from uh, Dave Hodges. Uh, It's quoted as saying, Often in life there is a stated reason for for performing some action, and then there is a real reason. Below are some key provisions which are part of the impetus for activating the FEMA camps. Number one, the continental U.S. will be broken up into five regions. or um, Services will be required in each state within each region. Now, I'm going to give you a map in here. There's a lot of pictures in the study today. Not as many as last week with that Catholic study, but um, I'll give you a map of how they will split up the five regions. It's, it's all in here. And a lot of links to confirm what we're talking about today. This isn't just one thing I'm citing from one source. It's, it's multiply confirmed. They're getting really so flagrant with what they're doing in, you know, Big Brother, what they're doing, that it's really becoming easier and easier to document what we're trying to verify on a weekly basis because they're so flagrant, they're so out in the open at this point. I think they're so far along with their agenda that they don't even really try to mask it anymore. They're just really in your face. And what that also does is they can gauge public outcry. If they're really in your face and there still isn't a big public outcry, what that does is it gives them the green light to say, well, the sheeple people are so dumbed down and or um, so preoccupied, bread and circuses like they did in the Roman days with sports and gossip and celebrities or whatever their, their lives are occupied with, that they don't really even care. Or, and, and a lot of people also see this level of information and they go into denial mode, like a turtle or an ostrich putting their head in the sand. They just, it doesn't matter what you put in front of them. It's so shocking and it's so foreign to their paradigm they've created in their head that they're like, okay, whatever. I just they, they the walls come up, the glaze look goes on, and they don't want to hear anything about any of this information, even though now it's getting to the point where it's so easily verifiable. Now, not everyone. There is I think there's a lot of people waking up to this. A lot of them, though, the problem you see is that a lot of them are secular, and maybe they're waking up to this reality regarding what's coming with the government, but they don't have any spiritual remedy. They've only got their Okay, now I'm, uh, I'm, I'm awake regarding what the government is proposing, martial law, these types of things, enactment of these legislations. But they need to get saved. I mean, that's the main thing. You know, you can be woken up to all this stuff all day long and, you know, fight the good fight regarding the patriotic lifestyle or whatever and go straight to hell. So, the main thing is that you get saved. That's the absolute main, main thing. So if you're not, and you're listening to this, uh, you want to go to contendingfortruth.com, click on the salvation. There's a salvation tab near the top, and just listen to those teachings in the order I have them listed, uh, because that's the main uh, reason that this ministry really exists. So going further, regarding the uh, key provisions for the FEMA camps, Number two, contractors will establish services listed below within 72 hours for initial setup and respond within 24 hours for incremental services. Lead times will be short with critical requirements due to the nature of emergency responses. Subcontractors must be flexible and able to handle multiple shift priorities in an emergency environment. Um, Back to cutting-edge comments. As we have warned since 9-11... The government is geared up to clamp down a total dictatorship within 72 hours of announcing martial law. Uh, The federal government is prepared to act quickly once World War III begins between Israel and her Arab neighbors, uh, an event which is only awaiting the full completion of the Club of Rome plan to reorganize the world into ten supernations. Eh, I don't know. I don't know if I fully buy into that, where we've got to have total reorganization into ten supernations um, before the uh, World War III in the Middle East. I, I don't... I, I think it could happen alongside that event. I don't think it has to happen prior, necessarily. I think we're kind of splitting hairs there. Uh, but, again, the, the Ten Supernations, that's already been laid out. Uh, 
in their documentation, and it would also line up with the ten horns in Revelation and in Daniel, where we've got the ten, basically, super nations on planet Earth. So, uh, they've got a news report, if you want to know more about that, you can click on the link there. Uh, then it goes on to say, you can judge anyone's statement as to the timing of the absolute dictatorship by simply checking the progress of the ten super nation reorganization. Again, I think that could happen in very quick succession, and I don't. I, I just don't see why that has to be all set in place, all prior to this happening. Uh, and then back to the main article, it says, number three, subcon- subcontractors will mobilize, transport, erect, and install, demobilize, temporary, temporary fencing, barricades, and associated equipment along, according to federal, state, and local laws, codes, and manufacturer installation instructions. The subcontractor shall be able to mobilize and deploy key personnel within four hours of the NTP to meet with the KBR, Kellogg Brown, and I forget the other last name, uh, site manager at the responder support camp site in order to finalize the site design plan and to acquire specific design requirements and layout. Number of linear footage now, it's a little technical, but they give the actual linear footage of different camps that they would be erecting within the 72-hour period. And some of these can go up literally overnight, it sounds like, within a 72-hour period. They've got one camp that has 2,300 linear feet, uh, which would house 301 people. That camp could actually go up in 36 hours. And then the next camp is approximately 3,600 linear feet, which would be enough for a 1,000-person camp. Now, that would take 72 hours. Now, they've also got all their 600-plus... FEMA concentration camps they've already had built for a long time. Uh, these are just on top of that. This sounds like a FEMA act, camp activation to me. The Illuminati is going to make all the plans they must feel they must make, but they will not activate any of them until all all things are in place and until Bible prophecy, which is really the Lord, allows them to activate things. God is in control of the timing of the encroaching dictatorship. True. And that's what we always have to keep in the forefront of our mind, no matter what happens. So, next article. Does the indefinite detention bill foretell the future? This is by USAWatchdog.com, Greg Hunter. The recent passage of the National Defense Authorization Bill, Senate Bill 1867, otherwise known as the indefinite detention bill, effectively hands over control to the military to arrest, torture, and even kill terrorists on American soil. It also allows the military to hold suspected terrorists indefinitely without a trial or due process. This applies to both non-citizens and citizens of the United States. With this bill, you are innocent until proven guilty, you are guilty until proven innocent, and you may never get a trial to defend yourself. Now, I, I know that this came out, you know, this has been ongoing here for probably over a month, and a lot of times the reason I don't report on something right away is I kind of sit back and I let the information come in and confirm and where we get a lot of confirmation and we kind of can have a better idea where things are moving. That's why I kind of waited to do this study. And also I'm using a lot of, a lot of different varying sources to confirm what we're talking about today. So going further, there is surprisingly little written in the mainstream media about the Senate bill that passed 93 to 7 at the end of November. 93 to 7. That's how bad they, the Senate sold the American uh, populace out. My question is who decides who is a terrorist and who checks to make sure the charges are, are even valid? The Senate bill m- must now be reconciled with the House passed version, H.R. 1540. Um, and I believe all this has already went through. If this bill gets through the House of Representatives in the form it is in now and is signed into law by the President, which it already has been, the military will answer to no one. My other big question is, if the 93 senators from both parties voted for this unconstitutional legislation, what do these folks see coming? What is the future scenario they'll see? I mean, there was no... This is horrifically horrendous. The, the Senate is just a bunch of devils essentially. They, I mean, they, they couldn't have sold the American populace out anymore. 93 to 7, they voted for in favor of this? But what he poses here is, if the 93 senators from both parties voted for this unconstitutional legislation, what did they see coming? 
And that's what we're going to be really talking about today. What future scenario do they all see? I mean, evidently this is really important to them. And it's very important that they can actually implement this with all within a 72-hour period. Billionaire investor George Soros is not looking at a rosy future from his vantage point. He sees global financial calamity coming. He recently said, quote, The global financial system is in a self-reinforcing process of disintegration. The consequences could be quite disastrous. Uh, next article. It's entitled, Happy New Year, Obama Signs the NDAA, Indefinite Detention Now Law of the Land. Uh, ushering in the new year, President Obama signed legislation that helps to further destroy the principles the nation was founded upon. President Obama, who pledged to veto the National Defense Authorization Act, has now signed it. Of course, his promise was only for public consumption. After all, lying to your enemy is what invading corporate takeover armies do. It was the Obama administration all along that demanded the indefinite detention provisions to be added while at the same time telling the American people he was fighting to protect their rights. This is treason on parade, in your, in, in your face despotism, that is, for any of those paying attention. Now, if you want to see more documentation of this, uh, there's documentation, I'm not going to go through this, it's basically reiterating what we just said, the 72 hour period, um, uh, the document originating from Halliburton, who's subsidiary of KBR, and that provides details of a push to outfit FEMA and U.S. Army camps around the United States within a 72-hour period. And the documents are titled Project Overview and Anticipated Project Requirements. There's a link here you can click on. The document describes the services KBR is looking to farm out to subcontractors. The document was passed on to us by a state government employee who wishes to remain anonymous for obvious reasons. And there's a copy of the document here. You can look at it. Um... It's a lot of reiteration. It's more specifics into what we just talked about. But we've got so much to cover today. Um, it's a lot of it's redundant, but it's just more confirmation. And then there's another thing here. Uh, documentation, internment camp services bid arrives after NDAA. So after this NDAA was, was passed, um, KBR's call for FEMA camp services bid arrives soon after the Senate overwhelmingly passed the NDAA. And... Uh, Section 1031 of the NDAA bill declares the whole of the United States as a, quote, battlefield and allows American citizens to be arrested on U.S. soil and incarcerated in Guantanamo Bay. And there's, here's the map of the actual five sectors of the country split up. And you see, like, for instance, sector number two is... Kentucky, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and Florida. And then they've got different sectors. Um, further confirmation. The, this is entitled Army Post, Job for Internment Specialist, following the KBR call for Camp FEMA subcontractors. Um, following a report on December 6th documenting KBR's outfitting of the FEMA internment camps, Business Insider, Business Insider, the magazine posted an article entitled, it's online, but an article entitled, The U.S. Army Now Offers a Prison Guard Specializing in Securing Civilian Detainees. Uh, And then it quotes from that article, Every soldier that enlists in the Army chooses a military occupational specialty, or MOS, writes Robert Johnson. Uh, Designated by a number and a letter, the 31E MOS now includes advanced responsibilities, including command and control of prisoners of war, and civilian internee camps. Prisoner of war and civilian internee camps. So, they're pretty much out in the open now with this stuff. The job is related to subcontractor work announced by KBR. They're the ones setting up the camps. And the listing is posted under careers and jobs on the GoArmy.com website. And there's a link to it here, if you don't believe. The job is similar to the one offered by the Army National Guard, which was covered in July of 2009. Following our original post, the Army National Guard removed the job posting from its website. I believe that's InfoWars that uncovered that. Then, further confirmation. Internment Resettlement Specialist National Guard Recruiting Video. The U.S. military has produced a video on a new era of specialization, internment resettlement specialist. I'm just going to play this. You can can hear it, and you you can click on the link if you want to go see it. 
And you can hear the you can hear it right out of their own mouth. Okay, so we're gonna roll this National Guard advertising for internment resettlement specialist uh, for concentration camps in America. I'm gonna go ahead and roll this now. Now, what they're doing is online, they're going to the National Guard website and clicking on it. You can see the whole browser um, where you know this is right off their website, and it's the National Guard website. So uh, let me just back this up a hair and we'll start over. Military Occupational Specialty Internment Resettlement Specialist. This MOS plays an integral role in providing a uniform system of handling prisoners and detainees. First and always, these MPs are combat support soldiers trained to fight, then also trained as internment resettlement specialists to control and supervise detainees to ensure their humane treatment and to assist them in returning to a productive life. Right. For this job, the Army will train you to use specialized equipment to monitor activity, to conduct searches, and to inspect areas where prisoners work and live. Here, you'll train to in-process prisoners and detainees, and to brief them on their rights. In addition, you'll train to inventory and secure their property, take photographs and fingerprints, issue personal items, and assign cells. Now remember, this is civilian detainees. You'll train to conduct prisoner formations and roll calls, to monitor their exercise, recreation, and work areas, to prepare and maintain records, and develop written reports. After your initial entry training and advanced individual training, you'll work long hours, day or night, in a garrison or field environment, where you may practice emergency procedures, detect and confiscate contraband, and escort prisoners outside the facility. Serving in this MOS can help you transition from the military to the civilian employment sector. In the military police corps, you'll be providing both combat support and law enforcement wherever you go, always upholding our motto, of the troops and for the troops. Military occupational specialty, internment resettlement. So that was the the video there. Um, Just a little bit further proof there that they're actually doing this. Uh, the defenders of this video say that this is for occupation outside the USA, but the 2012 revision of the NDAA, which just passed, and Obama signed it, incorporated this when it was signed into law by President Obama. FEMA's emergency camps are not are not outside the USA. <clears throat> so it goes on to say, how could this all be simple when this is when the Patriot Act, this is where that Patriot Act was headed even before September 11, 2001, back when it was written for Bill Clinton, this was the implication. There are people who think this could not happen in America. When the National Guard has a recruiting video for internment camp specialists of civilian detainees, it is getting ready to happen, most likely. Notice that the, um, the video was actually shot in the United States. The whole video was shot in the United States. Well, it wasn't shot in some third world uh, country, in other words. <clears throat> It goes on to say, uh, this wide variety of prisoners is good for avoiding ACLU lawsuits against profiling. They had different people represented in the video video who would be potential prisoners. Okay, um, So it, it says this wide variety of prisoners is good for avoiding ACLU lawsuits against profiling, but it goes deeper than this. The problem is that profiling will not be racial or cultural. It will be ideological. Opponents of the federal government policy. I mean, that's, everything's set in place now, that um, all you really would have to do is be a perceived enemy of the federal government, and you're eligible for, you know, being shipped off to these camps, with no trial or attorney or anything like that. So, next article. Federal interest in food storage facility connected to FEMA executive order 10999. <clears throat> on Thursday, Stuart Rhodes of Oath Keepers posted a bulletin on the organization's blog reporting on federal agents demanding a food storage cannery in Tennessee turn over its customer list so they might discover who is purchasing bulk storable foods and storing it at the facility owned by Mormons. 
He then speculates as to why the feds would demand customer lists. Quote, DHS and FEMA wants to know which Americans have food stored so the federal government can at some future point confiscate that food. Just as with lists of gun owners, compiling such lists is the first step toward future confiscation, he writes. Obviously. That's the only reason. I mean, it's not like they're stockpiling, you know, bombs and grenades. They're stockpiling food. In fact, the government codified the concept of food confiscation and redistribution when President Kennedy, I mean, this is going back a long time here, issued Executive Order 10999 on February 16, 1962. 10999 was one of the several executive orders signed by Kennedy under the rubric of national emergency that extended extrajudicial powers to FEMA, uh, including the ability to control communications, energy, food, fuel, farms, and transportation, highways, roads, inland waterways, and seaports, health, education, and welfare. The EO also allows FEMA to organize citizen work brigades under government control and undertake the relocation of the population. When I say EO, it's the executive order. 10999 also gives FEMA the authority to control all public storage facilities. On June 3, 1994, President Clinton consolidated all previous FEMA executive orders into one all encompassing order, number 12919. As many have noted, FEMA is not an emergency agency, it's a martial law agency. It is often referred to as the secret government of the United States. It's not an elected body, it does not involve itself in public disclosures, and it even has a quasi-secret budget in the billions of dollars, writes Harry V. Martin. This government organization has more power than the President of the United States or Congress. It has the power to to suspend laws, move entire populations, arrest and detain citizens without a warrant, and hold them without trial. It can seize property, food supplies, transportation systems, and can suspend the Constitution. If we take the above into consideration, it makes sense that the feds would be interested in keeping track of facilities storing food supplies. So, some more proof there of impending things that are all locked and loaded in place. It's just a matter of really implementation. Next article. Executive military to designate U.S. citizens as enemy during collapse. Uh, <clears throat> and I give you an actual copy of the first page of this document. FEMA, continuity, continuity of government plans, preparation, takeover of society, dispatching military domestically under economic collapse emergency. That's kind of like the title. Uh, This is from December 21st. Written within an hour of posting this article and linking to the pertinent document, the feds at the FBO.gov, that stands for Federal Business Opportunities, and there's a link there you can click on, they have pulled the link for this document within an hour of posting it. Somebody must have really been on their toes. They found this, they got it, they saved it, they put it in Flickr documents online, and they have all the pages of it. Page 1 through 11, the Flickr documents are still up, but within an hour of posting it, this FBO.gov, Federal Business Opportunities, government website, pulled the link and implied that it was a classified posting. What was classified? The military to designate U.S. citizens as enemy during the collapse. That was just part of it. We believe this was public and of no interest to... This was public and of no interest to American citizens, taxpayers, and peoples of the world and are in the process of reestablishing an archive link of the material, and they've already done that. Obviously, however, the information is revealing and certain parties do not wish it to be widely known. In the meantime, here are the links to the many pages, so you can verify it for yourself. Uh, i give you a picture of one of them in the document. Relating to this, the next article is Government Censors Document Revealing Plans to Wage War on Americans. <clears throat> That the document was removed and placed by the following cryptic warning against posting classified documents. This is what they put up basically as a warning about posting these types of documents. The warning was, attention, agency users are responsible for properly uploading controlled, unclassified materials to the FBO using the access control procedures for document packages and attachments detailed in the FBO Buyer's Guide. Do not upload any classified materials to the FBO, which evidently this was considered that, 
and they took it down right away as a result of that. The government link document we posted was marked, quote, source selection sensitive, but not considered classified. Further, it was listed publicly on a government website that was soliciting bids for government contracts. And again, this is this whole thing that we're seeing here with KBR and these companies. They're soliciting these bids for government contracts to, uh, in part, get these basically mini concentration camps set up within a 72-hour period, being able to actually staff the, the uh, concentration camps in these uh, 72-hour periods and even sooner than that in some cases. However, uh, it goes on by saying, however, despite its public classification that was listed, it contains information that is clearly not intended to gain widespread publicity. These new FEMA documents confirm information received from the DOD, which stands for Department of Defense, sources that show military involvement in a FEMA-led takeover within the United States under partially classified continuity of government, or COG, plans. It involves not only the operations for relocation of COG personnel and key officials, population management, emergency communications and alerts, but the designation of the American people as enemies under a live military tracking system known as Blue Force Situational Awareness, or BFSA. That's, that's quite a bit. The, the second part of that statement is, is quite... Uh, Horrific. The designation of American people as enemies under a live military tracking system known as Blue Force Situational Awareness. Further, this November 18, 2011 FEMA released plan entitled National Continuity Programs and Mission Support Services, which there's a link to it, a PDF link, which is linked at the Federal Biz Ops Gov, which is this FBO Gov site, outlines, which stands for Federal Business Opportunities, again, um, putting in bids for the government to actually get these jobs. Uh, this link from this website outlines a scenario that overlays with eerie accuracy the bigger picture sketched out by the concurrent calls for troops to keep order in the streets, as well as other bombshell documents like those released from the KBR, seeking to activate uh, contracted staff for emergency detention centers and for services like fencing, barricades, as well as numerous agencies and think tanks who prepared for civil unrest and economic breakdown of America. I mean, I don't know about you, but it really seems like they're gearing up for something gigantically huge here. <laughs> I mean, we're giving you source document after source document of this very thing that's that's they're really gearing up for that they're coming that's coming. And so, at some point, you just have to say, "Well, okay, what, what's what are they what are they planning for here?" Uh, so, the plan for takeover of the, of the United States has not only been drafted but activated. Our sources and independent research make this abundantly clear. Martial law scenarios preparing for a breakdown of order under the ongoing economic collapse are underway. A laundry list of operations organized under the FEMA's national continuity programs provide a base of technical support for the development of national emergency plans and the logistical tracking of all personnel incorporated under what Homeland Security Chief Janet Napolitano has lovingly termed the big, quote, federal family. And there's a link to that quote. I mean, pure evil, Napolitano. I mean, it doesn't get much more evil than that. Uh, friendly military and FEMA personnel, along with their contracted employees and those of other federal agencies, will carry transponder ID badges, like those described here, there's a link, to designate their blue inclusive status, as our military sources have confirmed under the Blue Force Situational Awareness. All other American citizens... Okay, so all other people who aren't friendly military and FEMA personnel and their contracted employees and other federal agencies, everybody outside of that group I just described, all other American citizens and civilians are designated under the red category and treated as an enemy or potential unfriendly, essentially branding ordinary Americans as battlefield enemies. The plan includes drone and other high-tech Tools to monitor and target individuals designated under the, quote, enemy status. I mean, this is just so flagrant and so insane. But this is what's coming. Now, a point that heavily relates to this subject that I haven't really 
talked about in a long time. I've, I've mentioned it, but I've, I've done dedica- dedicated studies on this, and I'm going to provide you links to many of my teachings because there's a lot of overlap in the in the information we're covering today. A lot of overlap, and um, something that relates heavily to all of this that we're talking about is the churches, the 501c3 corporate church, how they have been yoked up with FEMA and Homeland Security. And this has been going on for a long time. And how that is going to be used against the American population and against those people in those particular churches that are yoked up with FEMA, Homeland Security. They're also yoked up with a 501c3 corporate status, where essentially the government slash IRS gives them their, their right to exist. You know, they have to have all their licenses in order to get that. So, go, I'm going to segue now into church organization refu- refuses to divulge if pastors are on FEMA payroll. This is an article. It's, it, this one was from February of 2009. Uh, it shows a picture here uh, outside of a uh, building, and it says people are expressing concern about martial law training and are told the information was privileged. Now, we're going to get to that more. A large church organization has refused to divulge how many of its pastors are on the FEMA payroll. After a member expressed concerns about religious leaders being used to condition their congregation to accept the declaration of martial law. In May of 2006 story, we first broke the shocking news that FEMA was training pastors and other religious representatives to become secret police enforcers who teach their congregants to, quote, obey the government in preparation for a declaration of martial law, property and firearm seizures, and forced relocation. They also left out forced vaccination centers, where you would literally be forced vaccinated at the churches, or at bare minimum, the church is being used as centers for uh, like a busing depot where they bus you out of there to their camps where they then force vaccinate you. Exactly how that's going to play out, it's hard to say. But Despite debunkers and urban myth websites claiming the story was a hoax, it was confirmed in triplicate by mainstream news outlets over a year later. A KSLA news report confirmed that the clergy response teams are being trained by the federal government to, quote, quell dissent and pacify their citizens to obey the government in the event of the declaration of martial law. So you hear me railing on on the 501c3 corporate church a lot. Well, I got a whole lot of reasons to be railing on them. Number one, there's no biblical precedent for a church ever yoking, for a New Testament church, or any church for that matter, yoking itself up with the government. I mean, anything that has two heads is a monster. Whoever created you has the ability, you know, to... uh, to essentially dictate how you should be run, and to um, essentially eliminate you if they say, well, you're not following guidelines. And that's where it's going to come home. I've done teaching called Caesar's uh, Calling Home the Chips, which actually is Dr. Dixon. I was going off his research there regarding this particular thing. When the government finally comes back and says, okay, now churches, you've had this 501c3, designation for all these years. You've took our bait. You've took our satanic bait a long, long time ago, for the most part, most of you. And now, it's time to pay up. And this is one of the ways I believe they're going to be called to pay up for all these years they've been, you know, had this 501c3 corporate status. Oh, wow, now your congregants can write off your, um, uh, on. they can tithe, and then they can write it off on their taxes, their IRS taxes, the IRS taxes that basically go uh, toward the stinking Illuminati, the people that actually formed the Federal Reserve in, in 1913. That's, that's where your actual taxes are going. I mean, Robert Ronald Reagan, when he got in office, he commissioned the Grace Commission, Blue Ribbon Commission, that researched all factions of the government, and they said, fact out, fact, that Not one dime of what you pay to the IRS goes to running this government. Not one dime. It's going to the banking families on planet Earth and the the ones that own the International Monetary Fund. Primarily, most likely, the 13 families of the Illuminati. That's where that money's going. It's not going to running this country. 
people always say, oh, you, you don't pay your tax. You know how many taxes you pay just to survive? I mean, everywhere you go, you're being taxed. Gas taxes, food taxes, property taxes, sales taxes, all kind of licensings. And, and I mean, you're taxed so many different ways. People don't even, it's like none of those even count. Uh, Aaron Russo did a story, and, they, and I believe they killed him for it. He got bladder cancer mysteriously and died, called Freedom to Fascism. Just key it in on the keyword search box on YouTube. Freedom to Fascism. Watch that. It's all regarding the IRS and just documentation. And then at the uh, at some point, they show you all the ways we're being taxed. <laughs> it's, it goes on for so long, all the different ways you're actually being taxed. It's this gigantic clip of the movie. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there. They're, they're tied in with this. They're, they're, that's the whole trap with with people. You know, the Bible says when you give, let not your right hand know what your left hand's doing. And here they're giving so they can write it off on their taxes. I just don't see a lot of Bible for that. And I'm not condemning people that have done that in the, in the past. Um, I'm just saying, I just don't see Bible for it. That's what I'm trying to base things off. So, and yoke it up with the government. That's a whole other issue. But um, here we go with this. Uh, let's just play this clip for you. This is when these clergy response teams were actually well documented. This is when it came out. It had been reported on earlier. And then these, this uh, news, news report came out. And Will it ever become a reality in America? Some fear any nuclear, biological, or chemical attack on U.S. territory might trigger just that. And as KSLA News 12 Jeff Farrell discovered, the clergy would help the government with potentially their biggest problem, us. So I hope you heard that. The clergy would help the, the government with potentially their biggest problem, us. Obviously, yes, we are their biggest problem. Now, something I also want to mention. I just saw, uh, was on one of the news reports recently, that, like, for the month of December... There, I mean, beyond, beyond, beyond record gun sales. And more people now carrying concealed weapon permits. And more people, there's more guns and bullets and ammunition now in America than has probably ever been ever. And a, a lot of it's been since Obama's been in office. And that would pose a gigantic, huge problem for the government, obviously. Because there's a lot of people that know this information and they're just like sitting in their bunkers locked and loaded just about waiting for this stuff to go down. It's because of that that I believe the way that they would have the least amount of trouble getting people to comply with whatever they tell them to do. And this is what we're going to get into in this in the last half of the teaching is if we had some global pandemic. Because, see, at that point, it's not about, okay, they're coming to get my guns. It's about, we have the remedy for the pandemic. Even though we created it, and even though it's actually in the vaccinations as well. And I'm going to prove all that, and I've proven that many, many times in the past. Um, But, it would be a great way to diffuse the situation, and for them to come in and not look like the bad guys... And say, hey, listen, we've got the we got the remedy. You just got to roll up your sleeve, get this vaccination, turn over your guns, come to our camps. I mean, would you rather die? That's why I felt for a long time that's. And again, I did a whole tour on the avian flu and proactive ways we can protect ourselves with the Prophecy Club back in '06. I did a 14 city tour where this is all I talked about. 155, 150. Uh, slide PowerPoint pl- presentation, and I'm going to give you, you're actually going to be able to watch that video if you like, I'm going to give you the links a little bit later in the PDF, uh, where you can actually watch it online, and um, really the information, although a lot of has happened since then, the information is just as pertinent today as it ever was, so let's go ahead and uh, roll this clip a little further. Charlton Heston's famous declaration captures a truly American value, the overarching desire to protect our freedoms. But gun confiscation is exactly what happened during the state of emergency following Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. U.S. troops also arrived, something far easier to do even now thanks to last year's elimination of the 1878 Posse Comitatus Act, 
That forbid U.S. troops from policing on American soil. If martial law were enacted here at home, like depicted in the movie The Siege, easing public fears and quelling dissent would be critical. And that's exactly what the clergy response team, as it's called, helped accomplish in New Orleans. Uh, Jeff, the primary thing that we say to anybody is let's cooperate and get this thing over with. So this is a chaplain. They give the, the abbreviation, Dr. Durrell Tuberville, soul to soul to Satan. And this is what he's saying. And then we'll settle the differences once the crisis is over. Such clergy response teams would walk a tightrope between the needs of the government versus the wishes of the public. In a lot of cases, these clergy would already be known in the neighborhoods in which they're helping to defuse that situation. For the clergy, one of the biggest tools that they will have in helping calm the public down or obey the law is the Bible itself, specifically Romans, Romans 13. Because the government's established by the Lord, you know, and, uh, and that's what we believe in the Christian faith. That's what's stated in the Scripture. Civil rights advocates believe the... Um so the government's established by the Lord, and we just need to do whatever they say we need to do according to Romans 13. That's exactly what they're saying. You heard it out of their own mouth. We're going to address that. I'm going to play the rest of this clip, and we're going to address that very briefly. Out of public cooperation may depend largely on how long they expect the suspension of their rights might last. Jeff Farrell, KSLA News 12 reporting. According to Tuberville, during Hurricane Katrina, the clergy response team provided 38 chaplains a day around the clock at eight different camps. Placating the masses and placating their congregations, and they're going to be... And this was a trial run. This wasn't the real, the real like, when they're going to really implement this on a, on a mass scale. But we're going to talk about that a little bit here. Now, I've talked about this a lot. I've done a whole teaching on Romans 13. Uh, but... Again, let me just read this to you. What I did is, normally I don't do this, but I'm listing the teachings I've done on this subject. They're going to be on about a little page, uh, probably about page 12 of the PDF. And the first one I've done on this subject, and I'm, I list it here, i got to do is click on the link and it'll take you right to the website. The feds train the 501c3 clergy to quell dissent during martial law. There's three parts. I did this on August 26, 2007. Okay, there's a link here to World Daily Net article on this. And in the title of this teaching that I did, during the reign of Adolf Hitler, three prominent Protestant theologians were dramatically successful in convincing German Protestants to cooperate with Hitler and his genocide of the 18 million, quote, devalued people. The Illuminati here in America are using the same tactic and will most assuredly get the same cooperative responses from the sold-out 501c3 corporate churches who were given their very right to exist via the government-slash-IRS, who are not versed properly in the true meaning of Romans 13 to know when they are being deceived. Most likely, much of the reason genuine Christian, Christians will be turned into authorities is because church leaders unquestionably and submissively are, and are unquestionably submissive to the government and will turn their congregates in. If you, are genu if you are a genuine pastor, are you prepared for officers of Homeland Security to enter your sanctuary, to sit down in your front row dressed in intimidating official clothing, and to listen to your sermon uh, and your announcements? Are you prepared to have them arrest you after the service for not adhering to official government guidelines as to what you can and cannot say? Pastors need to remember the era in which they are living and not succumb to the temporary political and religious pressure from your Illuminati government, but keeping in mind, uh, keep their minds focused on the eternal, uh, on the eternal word of God, essentially. Proverbs 25, 26, a righteous man falling down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain and a corrupt spring. That's how God views a righteous man falling down before the wicked. As a troubled fountain and a corrupt spring. Next article. Next, next teaching I've done on this. Romans 13, an unlimited subservience to the government. Where should a Bible-believing Christian draw the line? Um, this was August 27, 2007. Do Christians who use Romans 13 to teach that we should not oppose President Bush at the time, or any other political leader, really believe that civil magistrates have unlimited authority to do anything they want without opposition? For example, what if our president decided to resurrect the old mo monarchical custom of just prime noctis, which, mean, which stands for law of the first night? 
That was the old medieval custom when the king claimed the right to sleep with the subject's bride on the first night of their marriage. Would our sincere Christian brethren sheepishly say, well, Romans 13 says we must submit to the government no matter what? I think not. And would any of us respect any man who would be subject to such a law? So there are limits to authority. All human authority is limited in nature. No man has unlimited authority over the lives of other men. Lordship and sovereignty is the exclusive domain of Jesus Christ. Did John the Baptist violate God's principles of submission to authority when he publicly scolded King Herod for his infidelity? Did Simon Peter and other apostles violate God's principle of submission to authority when they refused to stop preaching in the streets of Jerusalem? I mean, the apostles all pretty much died because of that, because they wouldn't submit to the authority of the day, the government telling them what to do. They all died in horrific martyrdom ways, and that's happened all throughout history. So again, let's properly apply Romans 13. Going further, we ought to obey um, uh, Acts um, 5.29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. That was their response. Uh, So even the great prophets, apostles, and writers of the Bible, including the writers of Romans chapter 13, understood that human authority, even civil authority, is limited. Now again, if you just go to Romans 13... And, you know, they'll basically, they'll say, okay, let every soul be subject unto the higher power, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they basically will stop there. Okay? And then, what they don't get into is the, is the coming, the verses that come after that. Verse 3, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Well, now hold on. What happens when they are a terror to good works? Well, then this would not apply. See, this is talking about just godly rulers, essentially, who who would be a tear to bad to bad works. Just godly leadership over a com- country would be tear to bad works. But it's saying, for the rulers are not a tear to good works, but to evil. That's what they should be, but they're not. It's the exact opposite of that now. So. That's that's the big thing you have, and again, here, but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. Okay, if you're doing that which is evil, which unfortunately, that's what the government's doing. So everything's, it's, everything's flipped in these verses now. That's why we know this doesn't apply. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. What about when the government is actually the evil faction trying to execute evil on a populace. This is what we're dealing with here. And again, do we just say, um, well, let's just substitute. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God, but the powers be ordained by God. So what if we just substitute, let every soul subject unto Adolf Hitler? Because you could have said that in that day and time. Let every soul be subject unto Adolf Hitler. For as there is no power of God, the powers will be that are ordained of God. Now that sounds ridiculous, but hold on. That's exactly what they did. That's exactly what Adolf Hitler did. Okay, let every soul be subject unto Stalin. 50 million plus people that devil killed. I, I think he was even more evil than Hitler. He was killing his own people just for pretty much the fun of it. It, it was like he, he didn't even have any rhyme or reason as to why he was killing people. Stalin, if you research him, let every soul be subject unto uh, Lenin. Let every soul be subject unto Pol Pot. Let every soul be subject unto Mao Zedong. All these mass, mass, deluded, or Kim Jong-il, the guy that just arrived down in Korea. All these mass, mass murderers. Are we going to we gonna say, well, well, the powers of be ordained of God if they're godly? <laughs> yeah. But there's a qualification for that verse to apply that they just throw out the window, conveniently. Well, hey, they're yoked up with the government. They're created, their 501c3 churches are created by the government. Of course they're going to go along with the, what the government's telling them. They, they were created by them. Their, their, their church, in its corporate status, pastors the CEO, board of directors of the deacons. That's how it goes. I, I mean, this is how they, the IRS designates things. So... Next, next report. Disturbing. This is another teaching I did. Disturbing 501c3 corporate church report. Uh, the LA Times has just reported that local ministers. Now, this is from 
February 15, 2009, the LA Times has just reported that local ministers are being asked to spread the word about the upcoming digital TV switch. Remember when I reported on digital TV, harp, Gwen, sound of silent, uh, silent sound and mind control technologies? Remember that teaching I did a long time ago? Well, I'll give you the link here if you haven't heard it. This is why I don't have a TV, a big reason. Obviously, you know, there's really not a lot of good reasons to have a TV anyway. But, Digital TV, Harp, Gwen, Silent Sound, and Mind Control Technologies. There's a whole teaching on it. And here we have the LA Times telling that local ministers are being asked to spread the word about the up- upcoming digital TV switch. Why would the government even care if it wasn't something wicked and evil? And they're asking this to happen in the churches? Hmm, I wonder if there's any hidden agenda there. It's funny, I got contacted by um, Jesse Ventura, like one of his right-hand men, about two... It was about two, two and a half months ago. They wanted to interview me for that show, Conspiracy Theory, about this subject. Because they saw, I mean, I'm one of the few people that have spoke on it, I'm, I, but I'm no expert. What I did is I said, listen, I'm not the expert. I haven't even hardly heard a whole lot about this since I did that report. I said, you need to contact the people that actually uh, wrote the original source articles for the report. And I said, it's all in the PDF. On the, on the documentation that I provided. And those are the guys you really need to contact. And see what updated information they've got. Because, I mean, you just can't keep up with everything. So, going further. Standing in the pulpit of Mount Moriah Baptist Church in South Los Angeles. FCC Commissioner. <laughs> FCC Commissioner was standing in the pulpit. Jonathan Edelstein asked the Baptist Ministries Conference of Los Angeles. Which represents nearly 50 African American preachers. To include information on the June 12 digital TV switch in their sermons. Well, they can go to the corporate church. The corporate church will obey. You better believe the FCC is part of the government. They're part of the government. Essentially. Woody Ramsey, a deacon at Southern Missionary Baptist Church in Southeast Los Angeles, said the ministers were prepared to spread the word. Quote, it's incumbent upon each church to take care of the needs of its ministry. And this is just one more need of our people, end of quote. And then he said, we'll do our part, end of quote. We'll do our part for Big Brother. Meanwhile, the Worldwide Church of God has refused to divulge how many of its pastors are now on the FEMA payroll. After a member expressed concerns about religious leaders being used to condition their congregation to accept the Declaration of Martial Law. In May of 2006, a story first broke and has since been confirmed the shocking news that FEMA was training pastors and other religious representatives to become secret police enforcers who teach their congregations to obey the government in preparation for the Declaration of Martial Law, property and firearm seizures, and forced relocation. Uh, one more part, and then I'm going to end this part, and we'll go to the next part. Uh, U.S. churches now part of FEMA Homeland Security Initiatives. This is the other teaching I've done on it. These are all different teachings I've done. If you don't believe me, click on these and, and hear for yourself and look at the documentation. In this teaching, um, I get into some current events at the start, and then then we'll take a, a comprehensive look at the state of America and its churches to confirm why this nation has fallen into such depravity. Because this is a big reason. To this end, we will be documenting how the 501c3 churches in the U.S. are now part of Homeland Security, according to legislation enacted on 3706, signed by President Bush, and the secret FEMA plan to use pastors of the 501c3 churches as pacifiers to their congregations and preparations for martial law, which will be the linchpin in the U.S. for seizure of guns, property, forced inoculation, forced relocation, imprisonment, etc. We will then look at 30 ways the IRS tries to control preachers and churches in America via their 501c3 tax-exempt corporate status granted to them by the government. We will end by reviewing a recent article entitled, quote, Christian's duty to know how donations are used, end of quote. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm I'm, I'm running low on time here, I'm going to go to part two, and we'll continue from there. God bless you. Scott Johnson's weekly audios are available for free 24-7 on the internet at contendingfortruth.com. That's C-O-N-T-E-N-D-I-N-G-F-O-R. T-R-U-T-H dot com. Please help us continue this work. To support this ministry, our mailing address is Scott Johnson, 2nd Line, 450 Conover, C-O-N-O-V-E-R, Boulevard West, number 202, 3rd Line, Conover, North Carolina, 28613. 
or on the internet, PayPal can be used at contendingfortruth.com. Thank you, and may the Lord Jesus Christ richly bless you.